Later that day, Douglas had to return to the station to collect more supplies. As he was making his way around the lock, Did you hear that? You would. Can't hear anything, old boy. Everyone listened for the strange neighing, but the only sounds they could hear were the locks settling and a bird chirping in the distance. Ah, Dooney and his daffy stories. Now he's got me hearing things. But later, as he was returning to the castle, Now I'm hearing things. We better go slowly. If there's something out there, we don't want it getting hurt. Unless it's to get the first it be wanting. As Douglas returned to the castle, his crew went to talk to Lord Callan about what they heard. They found him talking to a farmhand. They both looked very worried. But Douglas didn't hear what they said. He was too busy renationalizing what he heard at the lock. There's no such things as Kelpies. 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 But the more he said it, the less he believed it. Donald, his twin, was worried. No sakes, Dookie. What's wrong? Douglas wanted to tell his brother but he didn't dare unless he risked being teased again. Nothing. Ahem, <laughs> just a wee bit knackered. Getting all the celebration work done. Donald knew his brother better than that, but he figured Douglas didn't feel like sharing it right now, so he left it alone. Just then, Douglas's crew returned with Lord Callan and the farmhand. They looked very distressed. Where's my Chesterfield? Chester who? Chesterfield, my prized horse. He was supposed to be here with the others, but he's gone. The big lumbox must have wandered off again. I think we heard him near the lock earlier. If we see him, we'll try to bring him back. I hope the wee horse was all we heard. Please do. Chesterfield's a big fella, but he's a dandelion. As the sun started to set, Douglas was back at the station, taking on water, waiting to return to the castle with his last train of the day. He felt a little better after a long drink, but he still felt uneased, both for the missing horse and the idea that something else was roaming the lock. Before long, he set off. The mists were beginning to rise from the lock. Ordinarily, Douglas liked watching the mist rise, but tonight he just wanted to return to his shed until the sun came out. Cautiously, he looked along the banks, but couldn't see anything out of place. Instead, Douglas noticed something else. His truck seemed to be getting heavier. He pulled and tugged 
but it did no good. He struggled a few feet before finally grinding to a halt. His driver and fireman looked him over. When they finished, they had bad news. Your brakes have jammed, old boy. I'm afraid we're stuck. Oh, that's grand. Anything else want to go wrong tonight? We'll just have to walk back to the castle for help. Douglas, you'll have to stay here in case anyone comes by. By myself? But what about the cattle piece, er, I mean... The driver and fireman stared. Then they laughed. <laughs> Not this again. Don't worry, Douglas. If there are any Kelpies, I'll doubt that they try to take a big, strong engine like you to the lake. Douglas was speechless. But if they come for us, it's been nice working with you, old boy. He watched as his driver and fireman strolled along the line towards the castle. Soon, the sun had completely vanished, and the lock had been swallowed by a thick fog. No one came for a long time. Douglas felt very lonely. Secretly, he thought this was a good thing. For a while, nothing happened, and Douglas's eyes began to droop. He had worn himself out worrying all day, and all he wanted was a long nap. But as he finally shut his eyes, they flew open again as a horse's whiny tore through the air. Then a gentle clip clop clip clop sounded out. Douglas trembled as he frantically looked around. He couldn't see anything through the fog, but the clip-clop, clip-clop drew closer and closer. Then, Douglas looked ahead and nearly screamed. Through the mist, a shadow lumbered towards him. It was tall, stood on four legs, and had a long face. Douglas could barely make out its eyes as they stared right through him. Tis the Cappies! That are coming for me! Douglas was so frightened, he closed his eyes tightly, but just when he thought he would be taken away, a voice emerged from the fog, and a bright light shone through Douglas's eyelids. Chesterfield! Hesitantly, he opened his eyes. There in front of him were Donald and the farmhand, and the Kelpie was just a regular horse looking cold and frightened. Chesterfield, I've been looking for you everywhere, you stupid thing. What is going on here? Well, we found your Kelpie Doogie. The poor wee horse was on Percy's train that I took. We hit a bob on and he broke out, out of his truck. <sighs> well... No harm done. Poor Brute's a little shaken, but he's safe and sound. What about you, Douglas? You look like you've seen a ghost. Well, not a ghost, per se. I thought Chesterfield was a kelpie. And I thought he was gonna take me away. <laughs> a kelpie? Well, Chesterfield may be a beast, but he wouldn't hurt a fly, especially not a great engine like you. Douglas's dignity sank lower into his boiler. Ugh, you didn't come out all this way here just to make fun of me, did you now? Nah, found your driver and fireman, and thought ye could do a little bit of all help. Before long, the men unjammed Douglas's brakes, and Donald coupled up to his twin. Then at last, with Chesterfield safe on board, the twins returned to the castle.
The following night, the party was in full swing. People and engines came from halfway around Sodor to celebrate, and the children clapped and cheered for the horses. Lord Callum's birthday was a huge success, and his smile was brighter than the whole festival. Everyone was happy to be there. Everyone. Except Donald and Douglas. They felt very silly. Ugh, I cannot believe I let that dafty talk tail rat on me dome again. Ah, good your wish. At least you didn't lose a poor horse. Aye, maybe that was your punishment for spitting that mumble jumbo again. <laughs> maybe it serves me the right. It does. Despite their embarrassment, both twins couldn't help but laugh. Soon, the farmhand came up. Thank you for saving my Chesterfield. I don't know what would I've done if I lost him. Ugh, didn't fetch yourself, sir. But I could help. Aye, and I learned me a lesson. Ah, never try to rattle ye about them defty kelpies again. Real or not, tis more trouble than the worth they are. Oh, sake. But Chesterfield's got quite a screech, he does. Um, that wasn't Chesterfield. He may be a coward, but he's never neighed like that. That sounded like he came from the lock. And all my horses are here. What? Then, what was... <coughs> Donald and Douglas stayed eerily silent for the rest of the night. But for the longest time, they took extra care when traveling near the lock, especially after dark. Although, people will say there is no such things as Kelpies, the twins were not so sure.